So we'll head across the way here into my uh, kind of chemical storeroom and my wax prep room. And uh, if you if you if you breathe in deeply, you can almost smell the beeswax. It's quite quite wonderful smell in here. And I've got I've got some stuff in process and I, I can walk you through the whole process all at once uh, right here. So what I've got, I've started out with some raw beeswax just like this. This is how I order it, hundreds of pounds at a time. It comes from a, a honey factory that produces honey commercially and I buy um, most of their uh, waste beeswax or it's left over whether it's waste or not, I don't know. But I break this up and then I cook it in a crock pot and you don't have to have anything analytical. I generally just buy crock pots in the uh, yard sales for a couple of bucks at a time. And what I do is I, I fill the crock pot about two inches in water and then I put beeswax and melt it in and that way the water will absorb out any water soluble component such as honey or other materials. And I'm about to decant this just through a strainer to get any, any uh, really um, hideous uh, contaminants. And you can, you can actually see the um, material flowing out of there that will catch in there. And I'll fill this to a depth of about an inch or so and then I'll set it aside. And the beauty of having the wax with the water at high temperature is that when the wax cools, they will separate out into their distinctive strata. So the water goes on the bottom with all of the water soluble component. And then the wax will coagulate and harden up on top. And it will have had the additional benefit, water being the, the catalyst here, is that all of the particulate matter that was in the beeswax mix will settle to the bottom of that sheet of beeswax. So I'm just about done with this here now. And I'll, set, I'll just set that aside and come back. And you can see all the debris that I've got from that. This is actually a pretty nice clean batch of beeswax the last one. I just got 200 pounds of beeswax last week, which is pretty nice. And I just I just knocked that out over here and when that gets big enough I throw it away. Now we'll, we'll just set this aside um, until it completely cools. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to handle it just yet. I'll let it, I'll let it uh, cool a little bit. But what I get at the end is a piece of beeswax like this, it's literally sitting on top of a bed of water. So I take it apart and if you flip it over you can see how all of the particulate matter settled to the bottom uh, of this block of beeswax and then I process that into the, I scrape that off into the trash can. We'll do that right here. And this, this seems like it may be a little intense to do this, but it's it's actually the, the easiest way to, to get this material clean. So I'm actually scraping off most of the particulates from the, the beeswax product. And the reason I do this rather than to go through really exotic uh, chemical modification or high temperature uh, filtering or things like that is because I really want to get a product that I can control exactly what I've done with uh, the beeswax because I want to have the purest, nicest beeswax. So I continue to do that throughout and then I will have in the end of that a piece of beeswax that looks like this where virtually all of the particulate matter, not all, you can still see little bits here and there, but I break this up and then I'm going to melt it over here in another cooking pot which I have um, just this is some of that cleaned wax that's melted in there and I'm about to excuse me blocking your 
line of sight there. I'm going to decant that into cookie pans uh, because that's just the easiest way for us to handle it. And I will do that like this. I use just a little bit of a chimney so I don't have to have three hands. Three hands is almost always helpful for all of these processes that you're using. I don't happen to possess three hands because I haven't been exposed to that much radiation just yet. But I use uh, just plain paper towels as my filter and that works really, really well. So I'm just going to ladle out some beeswax through the paper towel and you can see absolutely pure beeswax coming out the bottom. And the reason you can tell that it's pure is just because it's absolutely transparent when it comes out. It's not uncolored. It has a nice yellow color to it, which it should. And I'll just keep doing that until I get that pan completely uh, covered. And I'll just let leave that for a moment to, to drain out. And then I'll let this sit. And actually, in a while, I can see some uh, particulate matter. And I'm not going to disturb it. I'll clean that up in a little bit. It's just easier to clean up after the fact. And I've got some over here that um, I dealt with, I cast earlier this morning. And it, it actually releases itself from the cookie pan. So I just twist the cookie pan. And I have this beeswax. And you can see that it's just, just beautiful. Just lovely stuff. Uh, and if there's any particulate matter, it'll settle against this surface. And I'll just pick it out with a knife. You can see that I've got some here. So I'll just, I'll just pick that out and get rid of that and toss it. It's, it's an inadvertent thing, but we don't want it in there one way or the other. So I want to provide perfectly pure beeswax because then down the hill my wife will take this and filter it one more time and then cast it into beeswax blocks, which we resell and, or make and mix into other materials. But then later today, I'll take this out and put it in Ziploc bags. And then when we get enough big enough pile, I'll take it down the hill. So that's pretty much the whole process. You can see that this one is, is filled up. And uh, if there's any left or if it starts clogging up, I set that aside. And then being, being um, really penurious, I use this waxy paper as a fire starter in my wood stove downstairs. So this makes a perfect fire starter. I can just uh, light the corner and then the beeswax will catch and then catch on fire whatever's in the in the wood stove, which with, which is what I use to heat the barn or heat my space. So I just keep that box going with that. I'll set this one aside. So this will then cool off and become just like that. So. That's pretty much the whole process by which I clean, oh, many hundreds of pounds of beeswax a year. But I really like to have a product that I can control every step of the way so I know exactly what's going on. If I bought uh, clean beeswax or filtered or purified beeswax from somebody else, I wouldn't know what's going on with it. Uh, one of the other types of products that I'm working with is shellac wax. And this is some shellac wax that I... I just um, purified yesterday, I think. And shellac wax is, I'm not sure if you can see how hard, it's much, much harder than beeswax. Uh, and this is part of some of the finishing processes that I'm um, sort of reinventing. These, this isn't technology that's unknown, but uh, it is something that I'm having to, sort of re-engineer because the historical records aren't quite as clear as I would like. I'm working on a book called the Historic Finishers Manual, which will include very large portions on incorporating beeswax, shellac wax, uh, oil finishes, spirit varnishes, so that anybody who's really interested in either um, replicating exactly or interpreting historical finishing technique can can follow it. It's going to be a very uh, bench handbook sort of a sort of a book, not just a historical treatise. So uh, I've got 200 pounds of shellac wax directly from the supplier in India, which was a bit of an adventure 
trying to uh, uh, arrange for, for some long distance transport. But it worked fine. This is some beeswax from my supplier in Florida. This will keep me going for many months as we start to formulate some of our uh, finishing products and furniture polish products. So uh, that's, that's all fun. But this is where that particular part of the magic happens. And again, I'm just trying to re rediscover that which uh, the old timers knew as a routine thing. If you're interested in learning traditional woodworking with hand tools, visit my website at woodandshop.com where you can find free video tutorials, buying guides, and reviews. Make sure you subscribe to my regular blog posts and also check out my 10 steps for getting started. Enjoy!